always serving a fresh cup of daily inspiration, Deanna Hobbs. Today's inspiration is to assure you that it will happen just as God promised. I know you hear often that God is faithful and situations and circumstances really challenge that belief. But when God speaks a thing, when he promises it in his word, when he gives you a prophetic utterance, when he sends confirmation to you, his word will bear fruit and you will see what he said come to pass. Welcome to this year Wednesday. Day, September 19th, 2018 edition of your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast. My name is Deanna Hobbs, founder of Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We distribute free resources all around the world to help you grow in your faith and become every single thing God has destined you to be. I bring you warm greetings and big old smiles live from Empowering Everyday Women Ministry Studios right here in the city of Buffalo, New York. It is currently 63 degrees and overcast this morning. The temperature dropped last night and I am feeling the chill of fall in the air. I love autumn, so I'm so excited about the weather change. And I'm doubly excited that you have joined me today. You are a blessing to me. Every single podcast to hear. It's available for you as a free resource. Stream and download it on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher.com, your daily cup of inspiration.com, player.fm on my YouTube channel, under my name, Deanna Hobbs, D-I-A-N-N-A-H-O-B-B-S. Click that red subscribe button, turn on those notifications, and every time a podcast is uploaded, you will be among the first to know. I'd love it if you'd follow me on social media via Twitter at Team Deanna Hobbs, Facebook, at Deanna.Hobbs and Instagram at I am Deanna Hobbs. I'm ready to hear from God. I really am. So let's begin with a prayer. God, our Father, we love you. We appreciate you. You are so good to us. I pray for this individual who's pressed play today. There is something you want to say to them. So word my mouth and I will say only what you give me to say. In Jesus name, amen. Daily Cup family, I just want to thank God for the faith of my father, Bishop Joseph Brinson Sr. He believes God no matter what. In the face of great adversity and struggles and challenges, he stands firmly. And I remember last year, dad, who's now 83, got sick, so sick, he wound up in the hospital and the whole family was praying for him. My husband, Kenya, and I went up to see him. And when we got to his room, we were not expecting what we saw. Even though the reports coming from the doctors were quite negative, dad was sitting up in the bed, strong, laughing, talking, eating, witnessing to other folks. And around that time, dad was telling of the goodness of the Lord and how the Lord had healed me from two autoimmune diseases at a prayer service. The doctors were in awe, the nursing staff and everybody there that dad came into contact with heard about the miraculous power of God. And he said, God told me my work is not done. I still have ministry in me. I've got to preach the gospel. And so I know that because there's ministry to be done, this sickness can't hold me. I'm coming out of here. And he never doubted it, no matter what the doctor said. And sure enough, dad came on out of that hospital room strong and went right Right back to preaching the gospel and doing the work of God. That kind of unshakable faith he passed along to me, and I praise God for it because in this walk of faith, you need to believe the Lord because sometimes things go south, they go left in your life, and you'll faint, you'll get weary, you'll get too weak to go on if you don't believe that God is good and that He is faithful to fulfill His promises. This morning, God had me reading 2 Kings chapter 7, and it just blessed me. This whole situation we're about to talk about happened during the time of Israel's divided kingdom. The northern kingdom, Israel at that time, was ruled by a man named Joram. And during the time of his reign, the prophet Elisha was really flourishing in ministry. He was the successor of Elijah, whom we have been talking about for the past few days. And during this time, we find out in chapter 6 that the king 
of Aram, whose name was Benadad, had captured Samaria, the capital city of Israel. He shut everything down, and that meant nobody could go into the city and nobody could come out of the city. Just to help you understand what was happening, when armies put a city under siege like this in ancient times, it was a war tactic. They would starve the inhabitants of a city to make them surrender or make them so weak from hunger they couldn't fight. So the Israelites were starving to death and times were so bad they were eating donkeys heads and some had resorted to cannibalism. So in 2 Kings 7, God gave Elisha a prophetic word for King Joram. He told him about this time tomorrow, the famine would be over, food would be abundant again the very next day grain and flour would be sold in abundance at normal prices. In order for that to happen, God was going to have to work an absolute miracle. So when Elisha released this word, it was met with skepticism and cynicism because it seemed too good to be true. There can be times when your life is in shambles and it's hard to be optimistic, but you've got to dig down deep and say, no matter what it looks like today, I believe God's promises. He will do just what he said. The Bible says the royal officer, the king's right hand man, when he heard Elisha's prophecy, outright rejected it. He just did not believe it. Here's what he said. That couldn't happen even if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. That was his response. But Elisha replied to him, you will see it happen with your own eyes, but you won't be able to eat any of it because he excluded himself from receiving the blessing because he didn't believe. After all that happened, the Bible says there were four men with leprosy that got hungry. So they decided, hey, we're just going to submit to the Aramean so we could eat. But when they got into the Aramean camp, not a soul was there. All of this food was there and they began to eat and they took gold and silver and they were in shock at what they were seeing. Verses 6 through 7 tell us the Lord caused the Aramean army to hear this clatter of speeding chariots and galloping horses and they heard the sounds of a big old army approaching. Nobody was coming but God made them hear that sound. So they panicked, they ran into the night, they abandoned their tents, their horses, their donkeys, their food and everything. See, God already knew he was going to work a miracle. He already knew that he was going to have the Aramaeans take off and leave all of this abundance and take Israel out from under their oppressive control. Everything happened exactly as the man of God predicted it would when he came to the king. But here's the sad thing. The king's officer who had said that it wouldn't happen even if God opened the windows of heaven. Well, he did see the word of the Lord. Lord come to pass, but he was trampled to death at the gate by the throngs of people. And this fulfilled Elisha's prophecy that told him you won't be able to eat any of it, even though you'll see it. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss out on what God has for me because I'm skeptical, because I'm cynical. And today this word is for somebody whose life is in disarray. Right now you're dealing with difficulty, with sickness, with loss, with lack, with frustration, with discouragement. Things aren't going according to plan. You have hit some roadblocks, but God is saying he is going to restore you. He's going to bless you. You will recover all. He's going to lift you up out of this low place. Don't doubt. It will happen. Don't let this circumstance make you cynical or skeptical. Don't let what you're going through make you abandon your faith and forget that you serve a God who is able and forget that you serve a God of miracles and forget that you serve a God for whom nothing is impossible. He's a mighty deliverer, a strong tower. Our God is able to do just what he said. And just as Israel needed a miracle in the time of Joram, somebody listening to me needs a miracle. You need a turnaround. You need a breakthrough. You need a supernatural release. Don't you doubt God? He will do just what he said. And to remind you of this truth, I'm stirring 2 Kings chapter 7 verse 1. Just the first part of that verse into your cup of inspiration. These are the words of Elisha. He said, Here, 
the word of the Lord. That's it. As you drink down the contents of your cup, have an ear that is open to hearing the word of God and receiving what he said and believing that what he said is true. Your circumstances might be dire and the challenges might be great, but our God is greater. Stand on his word, hear the word of the Lord and receive it in faith and watch what he does. Now let's pray. God, I pray for this, my sister, this, my brother. I rebuke doubt. I rebuke skepticism and cynicism. They've gone through some things that have shaken them up, but thank you, dear God, for reminding them that no matter what the circumstances look like, your word shall come to pass. So we stand firmly on your promises. We know your plan will manifest and your purpose will prevail. So we decree and declare it and we agree in faith right now in Jesus name. Amen. Your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast has been brought to you by Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, where we help fuel your faith every day. For more information, log on to www.deannahobbs.com. 